Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the Ryanair Q1 results uh, release conference. My name is Michael O'Leary, the group CEO, and I'm joined this morning by Neil Sorn, our group CFO. Good morning. We'll open, as usual, with some opening remarks from me, and then going to ask Neil to take you through the uh, slide presentation, and then we'll uh, mix and match during a, a Q&A session. So, this morning, Ryanair reported a Q1 profit after tax of £170 million. Uh, euros as traffic recovers strongly post-COVID, but at lower fares. That 170 million euro uh, PAT is uh, before pre-exceptionals, before exceptionals, um, but is well below uh, the 223 million uh, PAT we reported in the Q1 of FY20, which was the last year pre-COVID, just to put it in some context. Highlights of the quarter. During Q1, traffic recovered very strongly to 45.45 million passengers from 8.1 million in the previous year. That recovery would have been stronger, but for the significant damage that uh, April and Easter suffered, uh, both bookings and fares as a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine at the end of February. Uh, prior to this summer peak, we've taken delivery of 73, 737, uh, 800, 8200 game changers. That summer 22 capacity is on sale at about 115% of, uh, of uh, summer 2019, in other words, the pre-COVID capacity. For, we've also uh, this morning announced that uh, our hedging for FY24, so next year, has been increased to 30%. Uh, currently in the current year, we're hedged at 80%. Net debt has significantly reduced to just 400 million euros at the end of the quarter. Uh, that's down from 1.4 billion uh, on the 31st of March, thanks to very strong and positive uh, ca uh, cash flows from bookings and trading. Um, and I'm, we're also pleased this morning to announce that the majority of the 29 A320 leases in our subsidiary Lauda Europe have been extended by up to four years uh, to now to 2028 at advantageous rates. Um, just a couple of quick themes. Uh, this summer, we are very proud to be operating 73 of the new Boeing 737 Game Changer aircraft. These aircraft uh, carry 4% more passengers, but they burn 16% less fuel and also reduce our noise emissions by up to 40%. We're continuing to invest in our partnership at Trinity College Dublin Sustainable Aviation Research Centre. And in April, we're very pleased to have announced a partnership with Neste to power up to one third of all of our flights to and fro or from Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam with a 40% SAF blend. In April, Sustainalytics ranked Ryanair as the number one airline in Europe, the number two globally uh, for our ESG performance. Following the beginning of the post-COVID recovery in air travel this spring, uh, Ryanair moved quickly with our trade unions to negotiate accelerated pay restoration agreements so that we could restore previously agreed pay cuts with all of our people as soon as our business returns to pre-COVID levels. To date, I'm pleased to say that accelerated pay restoration agreements have been agreed with unions representing over 80% of our pilots and uh, more than 70% of our cabin crew. And we are, significant progress is being made uh, in the, uh, to close out the remainder of those uh, pay restoration agreements. Uh, the, 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 the sense or the, uh, our decision though to work with the unions and to agree pay cuts to minimise job losses during COVID, during which we kept our pilots and cabin crew current and employed. Uh, and those decisions have been vindicated in recent months as many European airlines, airports and uh, other third party providers have struggled to restore jobs that were cut during the pa pandemic. Ryanair seems to be unusual among the major EU airlines this summer, insofar as we are fully crewed for both pilots, cabin crew engineers and uh, handling staff at those airports where we do our own handling, despite operating at 115% of our pre-COVID capacity. Uh, and I think that uh, reflects very well both on the team at Ryanair and on the decisions, the difficult decisions we took during the COVID uh, pandemic. Over the past two years, numerous airlines went bankrupt and many legacy airlines, including Alitalia, TAP, SAS and LOT, only survived by significantly reducing their fleets and their passenger capacity, despite receiving multi-billion euro state aid packages. These structural capacity reductions have created enormous growth opportunities for Ryanair in summer 2022 to deploy our new fuel efficient 737 game changers. With Boeing scheduled to deliver over 50 more of these uh, game changers ahead of summer 2023, uh, we continue to recruit and train substantial numbers of pilots, cabin crew and engineers. Already approximately 50% of our summer 23 capacity is now on sale and we recently announced new bases and new growth in Belfast International for summer 23, 
a fourth based aircraft in Venice in for winter 22, and the commencement of flights from Bologna Forley Airport in uh, winter 22. Thanks to our 210 737 order book and available fleet capacity, the Ryanair Group expects to grow from 149 million passengers pre-COVID uh, to 200, over 225 million passengers by FY26. And in so doing, we will capture very significant market shares in most of our major uh, markets across Europe. Just to touch briefly on outlook, our outlook remains cautious. We remain hopeful and optimistic that the high rate of vaccinations in Europe uh, means that the uh, airline and tourism industry will fully recover and put COVID behind us uh, through the remainder of 2022. But we cannot ignore or eliminate the risk that there may be new COVID variants in the autumn of this year. Uh, and our experience with Omicron last November, which really devastated our Christmas traffic and yields, and the Ukraine invasion at the end of February, which devastated our April uh, uh, bookings and yields shows just how fragile the air travel remains uh, in the market remains in Europe. While our recovery and certainly Ryanair's recovery during the summer of 2022 has been strong, we believe that recovery remains fragile and hugely dependent on there being no adverse or unexpected developments either from Ukraine or COVID for the remainder of FY23. If we don't have negative developments, we'll perform very strongly. But if there are negative uh, developments, we'll have to um, act appropriately. There are clear signs, as we had barely, as we've previously guided, of a huge pent-up demand for air travel, particularly for short haul uh, in Europe through the summer of 2022. However, while bookings are recovering strongly, they still remain closer in than they were, than was the norm pre-COVID. At this stage, uh, while we have limited visibility into the second half of Q2, we still have almost zero visibility into the second half of this year, uh, the two winter quarters, which are typically loss making. At this time, though, I'm pleased to say that uh, Q2 average fares are tracking ahead of peak co uh, summer 19, the pre-COVID period, by a low double digit percentage that's moved up from a high single digit percentage in Q1. Ryanair plans to, or, or, at the time of the Q, or at the time of the full year results announcement. At this time, Q2, or sorry, Ryanair plans to grow our FY23 scheduled traffic to about 165 million passengers. That's up 11% on FY20, the pre-COVID figures. It would have been higher, but for the uh, damage that was inflicted on April and Easter by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Despite being one of the best hedge airlines in Europe, high oil prices will lead to increased costs for our 20% 20, 20 of our unhedged fuel for the remainder of FY23, but that's a much stronger fuel hedge position than any other airline. But given this later booking profile, the lack of visibility in the second half of the year, volatility in oil prices for the 20% that's unhedged, and the potential risk for COVID, adverse COVID and Ukraine developments, it's still too uh, soon to provide meaningful FY23 profit after tax guidance at this time. We hope to be in a better position to do so at the half year results in November, but as our experience again with Omicron last November and Ukraine in February shows, any such guidance will be subject to a very rapid changes from unexpected events which are well beyond our control during what remains a very strong but a very fragile recovery. Neil, do you want to take us through the Q&A or the uh, state presentation? Yeah, sure, Michael. Thanks very much and good morning, everybody. Uh, Ryanair has the lowest fares and lowest costs of any airline in Europe. We're number one for traffic, and as Michael has already indicated, we're going to grow strongly from 149 million passengers pre-COVID to 165 million passengers this year. We're number one for customer service and enjoy strong environmental credentials with a B rating from CDP. And indeed, Sustainalytics have now ranked us as the number one European airline uh, for ESG. Uh, our balance sheet enjoys a strong triple B investment grade rating. And it's this financial strength coupled with our lowest costs that make us the, uh, the long-term winner uh, in aviation in Europe. This summer, we'll operate uh, 770 new routes and have 15 new bases uh, as we return to growth. And we're well set to uh, grow to 225 million passengers by FY23, thanks to the game changer order that we have, 73 of them already in the fleet. We come into COVID with the lowest cost per passenger X fuel of any airline in Europe, 31 euro. And indeed, we've widened the gap between ourselves and competitors in the first quarter where that has now dropped to 30 euro. And we would hope to build on that uh, over the, the coming months and years. On the quarter itself, uh, we saw a strong rebound in traffic to 45 and a half uh, million passengers from 8.1 million last year at a strong 92% load factor. 
revenue while up uh, 600%, 2.6 billion, was uh, badly impacted over the Easter uh, period due to the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. And as a result, average fares were down approximately 4% compared to the same quarter pre-COVID. Ancillaries, however, did perform well and helped offset some of that. Despite the fact that we grew by 330% uh, sectors and 460% traffic, costs were only up 250%, which was a very strong indication of the cost control in the business over the course uh, of, of the past uh, number of months. As a result, profit improved uh, from a loss last year of 273 to 170 million in the quarter, but still below the 243 million profit that we made in the first quarter of FY20. The balance sheet is improving. Uh, we, we finished the quarter with 4.6 billion in cash and an increase in uh, unencumbered aircraft to 92%. But the important number here is the net debt, uh, which has dropped significantly from 1.45 billion at the 31st of March, year end just ended, to 0.4 billion at the end of this quarter. Uh, so we're on track to achieve our target of uh, broadly neutral net cash, net debt over the next two years, despite record capex for the next two years. On current developments, um, summer uh, capacity is 115% ahead of peak summer 2019. This is helped by our 73 uh, Boeing Game Changers, which are now in the fleet. As Mike has already indicated, there is a massive pent up demand, but there are operational challenges, most of them outside of our control in the form of unprecedented air traffic control uh, restrictions uh, and air airport delays. Our fuel is one of the best hedge books in the market at this point in time. 80% hedge for FY23, and we've inc increased cover to 30% for FY24, which is a big competitive advantage. We will grow to 165 million passengers this year, but it will do so uh, on our load active yield passive uh, strategy. Recovery into the second half, uh, where we have very limited visibility at this point, we believe will remain fragile and subject to any news flow in relation to the Ukrainian uh, situation or indeed uh, any new variants of COVID-19. And of course, uh, uh, sustainability continues to be at the heart of everything that we do in Ryanair, and we've launched a new sustainability report. Uh, this morning. So just a bit more colour on the summer itself. Operationally, we're performing very well. We've got 73 game changers in the fleet. Uh, they're delivering uh, enhanced uh, fuel burn and extra uh, passengers, 4% more seats per aircraft. So as a result, we're operating 115% of summer 29 uh, capacity. The decisions that we made at the start of COVID to reduce and more or less eliminate uh, job losses and to keep our people and our crews current and also to get ahead of the recruitment curve uh, this time last summer means that we are uniquely fully uh, crewed for summer 2022. We're making good progress in relation to pay restorations and we're committed uh, to restoring pay when the business gets back to pre-COVID levels. Uh, so we, we, we hope to make further progress on that over the coming uh, weeks. Uh, as regards ATC, we are experiencing delays. We've seen an unprecedented level of disruptions down to strikes, down to shortages of staffing in both ATC and airports, albeit on the handling side or on the security side. We're happy to say this morning that we're uh, close to finalising the extension of four le of, of, of leases uh, in Lauda. We've got 29 A320s. We hope to extend the vast majority of those uh, for up to four-year periods, and that will up, up, up lock in immediate cost savings, but also add to our operational uh, efficiency and resilience uh, over uh, the coming years. We have uh, garnered strong market share over the past two years. Just moving on, I think this is an important slide from Eurocontrol as it highlights uh, Ryanair's strong performance across Europe. As you can see, bar none, we are operating streets ahead of everybody else. Most competitors are not growing this year, they're cancelling flights, whereas we're operating in excess of 3,000 flights per day and growing strongly. I think this is a very strong picture of what Europe looks like at this point in time. As regards hedging, we've got a significant competitive advantage over everybody else. 80% of our fuel for the current financial year is hedged. 65% of that is through, through jet swaps at $63 a barrel, uh, with 15% uh, through caps at $77 a barrel. And I'm pleased to say that we have now increased our hedging into FY24 to over 30% at just over $90 a barrel. And as you can see, this puts us in a significantly stronger position than everybody else and gives us a massive competitive advantage into this winter uh, and beyond in relation to fuel. 
Over the past two years, we've seen significant capacity come out of Europe, be it through bankruptcies or indeed uh, airlines downsizing as they receive significant amounts of state aid uh, from their, their, uh, their uh, governments across Europe. As a result of that, in Italy, for example, we've grown from 30% to 40% as Alitalia has significantly downsized. Uh, so we're by a country mile, the, the, the number one carrier there. We now grow to the number one carrier in Hungary this summer, uh, where another low-cost competitor has now fallen into second place. A lot of capacity has come out of uh, Austria, uh, where significant competitor capacity has disappeared or shrunk. Buzz. Our Polish operator have outstripped lot and we're operating our single largest uh, schedule ever out of Dublin this summer uh, with just over 30 uh, aircraft. So as you can see, we're very well placed uh, to grow to 225 million customers over the next five years, which will be a 50% increase in traffic from the 149 million uh, that we carried back in uh, FY20 pre-COVID. And this is facilitated by our 210 Boeing order book. As I already said, the environment and ESG are at the center of everything that we do. Uh, this morning, we've launched our 2022 Aviation with Purpose Sustainability Report, and this sets out our ambitious targets, not just for the next 10 years, but also our path to uh, debt carbon uh, neutral by 2050. Uh, recently, uh, we've uh, signed a commitment letter with SBTI, a science-based uh, targets initiative, and we would expect that they will verify our targets over the next uh, two years. And of course, I'm delighted that uh, Sustainalytics have ranked Ryanair the number one airline free SG in Europe uh, over the course of the past quarter. So in summary, uh, Ryanair will uh, grow to 165 million passengers uh, this year. That's an 11% increase on pre-COVID le uh, COVID levels. We'll do this in a load active yield passive strategy. Demand is strong. There's a lot of pent up demand in the market and Q2 fares are tracking ahead of the summer of 2019 by low double digit percentages. We have to caution, however, um, that the recovery remains fragile uh, into the second half of the year where we're typically loss making. You know, we uh, very well remember the Omicron variant uh, which emerged last November and we were concerned that something may happen into the autumn and winter of this year. Equally, there are risks in relation to what may happen in Ukraine if there's any spillover uh, elsewhere. And indeed, oil remains at very high and volatile levels. So as a result of this uncertainty, we don't think it's appropriate to provide PAT guidance at this time. We do continue to uh, target modest FY23 po uh, profits and we hope to be in a position in November to provide more meaningful uh, guidance on PAT. But beyond this year, uh, we're very well placed. There are lots of opportunities in the market. There are lots of growth opportunities at the right cost, and we will deliver uh, to 225 million passengers per annum by FY26. The balance sheet is rock solid. The opportunities are available. The cost base is in good shape, so we believe we're the long-term winner uh, in this market. Michael, we'll maybe uh, go over to Q&A at this stage, please. Yeah, thanks, Neil.